by itself, the robot doesn't do anything. It just drives around. The real tools, the robot comes from the implements that we attach on. The use case for a robot like this is a mission that is very monotonous. So something that is, you know, five or six miles an hour, 100 acres, hot conditions, dusty, whatever. The robot doesn't care about these things, but it's something that doesn't take, honestly, a lot of skill. We're right in the middle of the Holland Marsh. It's a unique part of Ontario in that it has very high organic matter. It's great for vegetable production. And this region produces about 80% of all the onions in Ontario and about half of all the carrots. I'm standing in front of the Nio Oreo. It's an egg robot, but it's, um, uh, the company calls it an autonomous tool carrier. So it operates on its own and it, uh, you can attach all different kinds of agricultural equipment to it. Um, we're working on cultivators for weed control and it also has three different types of sprayers that we're using mostly for weed control. There's a lot of interest in egg robots in Ontario, and we're very interested for the Holland Marsh uh, for two main reasons. Uh, a lot, there's a lot of hand weeding that goes into the production of these crops. Uh, there aren't a lot of herbicides and they don't work 100%. So there are crews of weeders that walk through, but it's getting harder and harder to find the agricultural labor that you need. Um, and the other problem is that even when we do have herbicides to control the weeds, now we have a lot of weeds that are resistant to herbicides. The challenges have just been figuring out ways to modify the robot and especially the equipment just to make it better, uh, more useful for the farmer. I'm really fortunate. I have a couple of technicians working on this project that have been very innovative. So we don't always have to go back to the engineer. Uh, they've been able to come up with a lot of ideas on their own. So one of the struggles with the farm grid was seeding onions at the speed and population that growers were used to. This robot only came with four seeding units and they plant in a single row. So this made it hard to match the double rows that growers are used to. To get around this, we 3D printed some prototype discs. These ones will actually drop three seeds in every single hole to help increase the population. This also takes some stress off the valve so it's not clicking every 3.4 centimeters and instead we can let it go every nine centimeters. This has allowed us to increase our speed and we're almost triple what we started with. There's a stereotype that farmers are stuck in their ways and that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And while there might be some truth to this, especially with the average farmer getting older, farmers are also incredibly innovative. Uh, we see that here in the marsh, the tools they come up with um, are incredible and we've adapted a lot of what we've learned from them into our own robots. When we're trying to pitch these robots to them and see if we can make it valuable to their operations, the hard part is seeing the return on investment for them. And that's really where the focus is right now. People are looking at how much the robot costs and what benefit they're getting from it. Is it labor? Is it saving on pesticides? Is it a sustainability aspect? I think all this goes into this calculation and right now it's a lot to figure out, but hopefully we're gonna to get to the point where it's an obvious decision for growers. My project all started when Kristen Obeid introduced me to Chuck Bersich uh, in the fall of, I think it was 2021. He wanted to demonstrate the little Romeo robot and brought it up here to the research station. I met Chuck and we had done some work on drones in the past, but I wasn't thinking too much about agrobotics, but that connection with Kristen and Chuck uh, developed into our agrobotics project. And my group was one of the early ones participating in the agrobot working group, but that has grown and through the co-chair of both Chuck and Kristen. But as the business person who actually has all the robots and has been instrumental in organizing a lot of the trials in Ontario, um, Chuck's a kingpin for sure. Pay attention and every now and again, you'll see this robot is doing its thing and we're not doing anything with it. 
Okay, so just keep an eye on it. Every now and again, you'll see that um, it goes up the field, goes down the field, does not require any input from anybody. And so you think about that if you are, if it's, you know, you're, you're on your farm and you need to weed a part of your plot, but you also have to be somewhere else for two or three hours. You can deploy this robot, let it do its thing, and then you come back and it will have done that task. Whereas in a normal situation, all, as soon as you leave the farm, all the work stops. And that's the, and that's the issue, and that's what, these, that's what these robots are trying to solve. Here at Haggerty Creek, we are a crop input and we are a, a, a supplier for farmers. So we sell fertilizer, we sell chemicals. And one of the things that I worry about is, is what if we no longer have access to that fertilizer? Or what if we no longer have access to those chemicals? And I don't want to wake up 10 years from now saying, hey, we no longer have Roundup that we can use or, or some other product and we need to work on these solutions. So that's what has driven me to getting into this space. We're trying to get robots that actually solve a problem. You know, it's quite simple for someone to build a platform that can drive, you know, to one end of the field and back again. That, that's not that hard to do. It's table stakes anymore. The challenge we've got is to have that robot do something useful for the farmer. These robots, for example, can be trained to follow a person around the property and so when you are hauling you know harvest goods or, or products or whatever they can follow the workers and it's super quick on how that works. And then to stop it you just hit the red button. Chuck Beresich from Haggerty Agrobotics contacted me uh, because he was interested in testing out some of these small NIO Oz robots and to see if they actually did what the company from France said they would do. And me, I am the weed management specialist for all of horticulture crops, so I made the connections with the uh, annual vegetable growers to take these out to the field to see if they actually cultivated, they actually ran six to eight hours a day, that they could do everything autonomously in the field. Well, Chuck's work's really important because he's sort of been the key in terms of making the connections with the robotics companies and actually utilizing the agrobotics working group to build those cross-functional teams to actually make projects happen. And so we have on this group, it's really quite fantastic, that we have the whole innovation continuum in agriculture. The researchers, academia, agribusiness, innovative growers, government, funding organizations, the technology companies. And just from word of mouth, people from all over the world have heard about the Agrobotics Working Group. They've heard about, about Chuck Beresic, and now, you know, we're kind of known as a leading expert in the field. So just from a few short years, there's a lot of momentum and a lot of energy in this space. So one of the things that we do at Haggerty is we take these robots out of their comfort zone. Typically when a robot is being built, the engineer and the manufacturer that has built it, they have an inherent bias in that when they built the machine and they go and they test it, they will generally design tests that they know the robot can build or, the, or can complete. And that's okay, like that's, that's human nature, but they also have limited space. They might only have a parking lot or they might have a, a, the city park or something like that. They can't really put the robot through its paces. What we do here at Haggerty is we will bring these robots and we will put them through what a farmer might put them through. The most common questions I get from farmers is, will this work on my farm? And that's probably the most common one. As similar when you're driving down the countryside to what farmland looks like, it's actually surprising the variation between you know, farmer to farmer, crop to crop, how things are done. And a lot of farmers have their own unique you know, attributes and ways that they want to grow crops. So a lot of this is like, you know, will it fit down my rows? Will it handle my soil type? Can I even learn how to use it? That's probably the most common one. The second most common one is going to be, is this going to be an improvement over what I'm doing now? And when I tell people, I say, you need to change your thinking about how you're farming because it's not as simple as just equipment and machinery and 
basically doing the same thing that we've always been doing, just bigger and better and faster. That's, that's really not what robotics is about. Robotics is about thinking about how do we use this technology and how do we use our agronomy and can we take two plus two equals five? Is there a way we can end up with a better outcome because of this technology? So a common misperception of farmers is that they are resistant to change. The reality is that farmers have a high risk when something goes wrong. So if they experience a crop failure or some kind of issue with that change, it's their livelihood that's on the line because they have to wait until next year to try again. I'm Matt Roberts, we're here at Adelaide Farms. Uh, we're a vegetable and fruit farm here just north of London, Ontario. Our goals with purchasing the robot were to mainly help with our weed control and cultivating between plants. Uh, eventually we figured that we could try it with planting, so we started marking rows with it with a modified potato plow. And it seems to be working a little bit better than expected and I think we're actually going to be using it more for our planting stages than our cultivating stages just for the next, you know, first couple of years and we'll try and figure things out in the next couple of years for the, for the weed control aspect. When it comes to the, the farm labor, we're, we're hoping to help with a little bit. It, it gets a little bit of long hours, so we're hoping, you know, the robot will kind of ease up a bit of that uh, timeline time line there. Uh, we found that it helped. We, we had some onions planted this spring. It seemed to work really well when it came time to pull the onions. They just grew out really well and uh, saved a lot of time there. Farming is always a risk. Every year you go out and you go and plant a little tiny seed that somehow grows into this great big plant and any bit of machinery is a risk and that's one of the, you know, a robot that is a piece of machinery to use. As far as buying another robot, I think like, like currently we're like, okay, we got to try and figure things out. Like it's, it's working, but we got to find ways to use it more and find ways to use it more, uh, more efficiently. If the business called for another robot, sure, yeah, we would buy, you know, go and buy one. But you have to make sure that it, you know, priced right, is it going to fit right? Something like this fits good for our farm. You know, it's not, our farm's not crazy huge when it comes to vegetable farms. But maybe there's bigger farms, maybe there's smaller farms. But different robots will fit different applications. And right now, I think this robot is pretty well the right fit for us here. The involvement of agricultural robotics, you know, should be important to Ontario and to Canada as a whole. You know, we want to be in this space because we want robots and machines to work in our conditions, to work in our, our fields and our farms. And a, a, a reality is, is that everyone has to eat and we're no exception. And so why not use our talented ac academic skill set? Why not use our manufacturing sector? Why not use our farmers and have an ecosystem right here in the province?